Hello wonderful human beings, Sheldon Evans here and in this video we're going to be going over a little technique known as frequency separation. Now if you've ever done any sort of retouching or photo editing in the past or you've browsed online for Photoshop tutorials, you might have found this technique online and that's because it's extremely powerful. So today I'm going to be going over this technique and how you can use it to retouch the skin in your portraits. And the reason we use this technique is that it separates the color and the texture of the image and places them on two separate layers. And we do this so that we can retouch non-destructively and preserve the texture of the skin while still retouching it and making it look incredible. But before we get in into the tutorial, I just want to let you guys know that I've opened enrollment for my Photoshop Retouching Mastery course again, and the link to that is in the description. So if you like this tutorial and you want to see more stuff like this in the future, you can go ahead and click on that link and visit the course. You get over 35 video lessons. You get Photoshop actions to speed up your workflow that we use in retouching. You get high resolution, medium format, 50 megapixel images to practice on if you don't have your own. And we cover all the retouching techniques you know to become a master retoucher. So whether you do photography as a hobby and you just wanna learn retouching or you wanna become a full-time professional retoucher, then the course is for you. So click on the link in the description to get a opening discount because the price will go up very, very soon. So make sure that you sign up soon. But more on that later because we're gonna get into today's tutorial, which is the frequency separation technique. So. To get started, we first have to create two separate layers, which will be our base layers. To do that, you can click on this to create a new layer, or you can just duplicate our layer that we're working on by pressing Command or Control J twice. So we can create two new layers. There we go. And we're gonna name our layers color, and we're gonna name our top layer texture. And these layers is gonna be where we're gonna have our color and texture layer. So you could name it low frequency or high frequency, but just for ease of use and to quickly see which layer is doing what, we're gonna name it color and texture. So now how do we separate our color and our texture layers? To do that, it's very, very simple. We're gonna hide our texture layer so that I can show you what we're doing. We're gonna click on our color layer. So on our color layer, we just want the color. And at the moment, we've got the color and the texture. So to separate them, we're gonna to go to filter, and we're going to go to blur and we're going to go to Gaussian blur. Now what this will do is it'll blur out the texture of our skin so that we only see a muddled version of the color. Now the radius that you want here depends on the resolution of your image but ideally you want to have a look at your image, zoom in, make sure that you have preview checked over here and zoom in and see that once you slide the scale along just make it to the point where you can't see the texture of the skin anymore. So to do that here, you can still clearly see the texture at this point, we're losing it. And I think around maybe 10 pixels on this image, 10.1, let's go to 10.5. We can clearly lose the texture of the skin, but we've still got the full color structure of the image. So we're gonna click okay. Now there's no way that we can work on this image because it's just a blurry mess. So we need to bring the texture back. So to do that, we're going to enable our texture layer again by clicking this little eye and we're going to click on our texture layer. Now this texture layer still has the full image. So how do we get just the texture out of it? Well, we have to subtract it from this layer so that we get the difference. We split the difference between the two layers. So to do that, you're going to go to image and you're going to click on apply image. Now with apply image, you're gonna make sure that the layer that we're applying it to is not background. We want to apply, apply our layer to the color layer. So we're gonna click on here and we're gonna click on color. Make sure that our channel is set to RGB. Our invert blocks is checked. Blending mode is set to add, opacity 100 and scale set to two. Now these are the settings you'll use if you're working on a 16 bit image, which is what we're working on at the moment. And to see this, you can go over here and you can see that it says 16. That means we're working on a 16 bit image. Now if you're working on an 8-bit image, you have to change some of these settings. You have to select subtract, you have to set the scale to one, one offset to 128, and you have to uncheck this invert box. But we're going to be working on a 16-bit image, so we're going to go back to add, scale to offset 0, invert checked, and we're going to click OK. Now as you can see, this looks kind of weird and scary, we can just see the texture on our image. How do we get it back so that we merge these two layers? Well, we have to go to our texture layer, click on our blending mode and change it to linear light. 
and now our image looks exactly the same. So what was the point of that? Well, now we've got our layers separated. Ideally, you want it to look exactly as before. You want nothing to change in this process because all we're doing is setting up our image. So you can select both your layers by holding shift and clicking on them together, pressing command G to group them, and then you can name it something like frequency separation or FS, whatever you like. And if you hide this and show it, nothing should change on your image which is exactly what's happening. That is perfect. So now we've got a frequency separation, separation layer with our texture and color separate. Now, how do we start working on this image? Well, we can work directly on these two layers. So let's go onto our texture layer and zoom in. I'm gonna be using the healing brush tool, which we can select over there. And let's take a look at what happens if I hold option and sample something and then start painting. As you can see, it's adjusting the texture, but the color is staying exactly the same. Now the same thing will happen on the color layer. So let's go to our color layer, hold optional or alt to sample, and then we can paint. And you can see we're moving the color from here to over here. We can sample, let's sample this darker area and then paint over here. As you can see, we're moving our color without adjusting any of the texture and preserving the skin texture, which is what we want. Now, how do you go about cleaning up this image? So I'm gonna show you a few little techniques that no one else really does when using these tools to really maximize the quality of your image. So let's go to our texture layer. We're gonna go ahead and click on our healing brush tool. Now you can use the clone stamp tool as well. Healing brush tool uh, will work very well, except when you get close to edges with uh, sharp color changes like this. So if you start healing along here, Photoshop doesn't really know what to do. So it'll start blending and merging these two colors together, which doesn't look ideal. So when you get to sharp edges with high contrast colors next to one another, like a dark brown here and the skin and this light skin color, then you can use the clone stamp tool. So we're gonna use this healing brush tool just to clean up some of the blemishes on the skin and some of this hair. Now you could leave your blending mode as normal. And this is one of the tricks that I want to show you. So if you're using the blending mode, on normal and you start sampling and painting you're just moving texture around on the image so if you you should sample a lot click sample and you can see that we're just rebuilding the texture and it's building a whole lot of texture on the image and moving a whole lot around but ideally what you want to do is you want to preserve the texture even further so we're going to go onto our texture layer we're going to change our blending mode to lighten now what lighten will do is it'll lighten areas that are already dark, but not darken areas that are dark. So let's take a look at something like this. Now you can see these areas here with the highlights and the shadows. If I sample, you can see if I paint over here, it's only lightening up the areas that are dark, but those light dots did not change at all. Same thing will happen here with these fine hairs on her face here. If we sample and paint, you'll see that it removes those hairs, but nothing happens to the light areas of the texture on the skin. So it'll lighten the darker areas to match the surrounding lighter areas. And this works particularly well for these little dark hairs all around the face here. And the same thing happens if you change this blending mode to darken. So if I change it to darken, it's gonna darken the bright spots. And this usually happens on makeup. So as you can see here, this makeup is catching these little sparks of light. This is not part of it. So we're gonna sample an area and you'll see if I paint over there, it just removes those little white dots, but not removing the texture at all. And you can work around your image like this and remove these little dots and these little bumps without losing any sort of detail in your image and really keeping that high quality that you want when you're gonna publish these images, whether you're gonna publish it online or in magazines or on a billboard, wherever these images are going, they're going to look incredible, especially when they blown up huge. So as you can see this little hair here, we need to change our blending mode to lighten again. And we can sample and we can just paint along this hair. And you'll see it removes it while preserving the texture underneath so we don't lose any of that detail at all. And it looks amazing. Now you can see what I was saying along the edge here. It's not blending that too well because we're using the healing brush tool. So we're gonna to switch to our clone stamp tool, go here again and move along there and we're gone, that hair has vanished. Now we can do the same for all the other hairs on her face. And you're gonna paint along here and work along the image. So 
Uh, as I show in my retouching course, obviously I show you how to set up your image and prepare your retouch so that you know where to start and how we're going to work on the image before we start. But for the sake of this tutorial, all we're going to do is we're going to work from the top of the image down to the bottom and just clean up everything that we need. So I'll, before we do that, I will speed up that retouch because it does take a little while. So I'll speed that up and then show you how, what, what it looks like at the end. But for now, I'm just going to show you these little hairs here on her face as well. Again, we can change our blending mode to darken. Where are we? There, darken. And we can paint away these hairs without losing texture. As you can see, just like that. And it looks amazing. Whereas if we were using just a plain healing brush here, we would be copying the texture from one patch of hair to another patch of hair, and it would just end up looking really strange and muddled and not high quality at all. Now you can use this technique not just for the skin, you can use it for the veins and the eyes, you can use it for these little dots around here. I'll actually show you these quickly. So we can go to darken again, and you can see we just paint away these dots super, super quickly. And that's what I'm doing here, is I'm trying to show you how to retouch at a high level with high quality while still preserving your time and the skin texture. Because it doesn't matter if you're taking eight hours to edit an image, you're not getting paid for that extra time. So it's essential that you learn how to retouch as fast as possible while still maintaining some sort of standard. So if I hide this frequency separation layer, you'll see all of these dots come back. And you can see what we did in a matter of seconds there. Same goes up here. Can see if I hide it and bring it back. All of these little blemishes are vanishing, but nothing's happening to our skin texture. So you can work around that. You can even use it in hair because some models have hair that is different color. So you can do that and to match up color if you're working on the color layer. So let's have a look here at this cross hair, how we can quickly clean it up with our texture layer. We can use a brush and we can just paint it away. We're on our texture layer, darken, change this to normal, and there we go. Look at that. That hair is just vanishing across there and there's no way that you'd ever be able to see it because we're only working on the texture and nothing's happening to the color. See our before and after? Bam! Hair gone. You can't even tell. So that's it. Now let's work on the color of the image as well. So let's take a look at the color down here. Now this red works very well if we have some discoloration in the skin or some makeup that was put on unevenly and we want to clean that up. And we can do this without dodging and burning or any other techniques, just frequency separation. So we're going to go to our color layer again. We're going to click on our healing brush tool or clone stamp, whatever you prefer. I'm going to be using this healing brush. And let's take a look at some of these blemishes here. So I'm going to hide the texture layer so that you can see what I'm doing. And as you can see, it's kind of patchy around here. So we want to smooth that out. So I'm going to use option to sample and I'm just going to paint. And now the technique here is not to sample and then paint a long line. You don't want to be painting a whole lot at once. You want to paint just small sections or you want to dot and dab. So as if you were using an actual paintbrush. You can do sample and dab, sample and dab, sample and dab. And you can work around the image like this. So I'm gonna just clean up this area here just to give you an idea of what's gonna, what it's gonna look like afterwards. So I'm cleaning up some of this light area here, clean that up. And you might not be able to see what I'm doing as I'm doing it because it is so subtle. And that's the technique in retouching is that you want to be as subtle as possible. You know, your job do is done well when someone looks at an image and says, wow, this looks amazing. Not someone looks at an image and says, wow, this was edited so well. You don't want to see your editing. Your editing should be invisible in order for it to be an effective and a good retouch. We want to convey real world images here. We don't want people to look at our images and think, oh, this was retouched, this looks amazing. Uh, no, we just want to be like, oh wow, this photographer captured a beautiful image. And you don't want it to even cross your viewer's mind that this image was retouched for hours. So let's take a look at what happened here. Now, if I bring this layer back before and after, let's have a look. As you can see, I've removed those dark little blemishes around there and smoothed that skin out without dodging and burning or anything at all, just using frequency separation. And again, you can work around your image like this if you want to and really smooth out the skin and get a perfect color tone to the skin and clean up that texture. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna speed up this retouch. I'm going to retouch this image quickly. Um, well, quickly in your time because it's gonna be sped up and you can see what it looks like as the final edit.
Alright guys, so I've finished the retouch, the majority of the retouch on the skin and I'm going to show you what it looks like and what I've done so far. So obviously there's more to do always, there will always be more retouching to do on an image so you have to get to a point where you're like, okay this is good enough for now, I like the way this is looking, any more time I'm going to be reaching a point of diminishing returns. So any more retouching, no one's really going to notice and it's not going to make that much of a difference. So I've cleaned up the majority of the skin and I'll show you what I've done. So if I zoom in here and I turn the frequency separation on and off, you can see that I've removed a lot of the blemishes on her forehead, down here around her eyes and on her eyebrow over here, while still preserving that texture and keeping her skin looking natural. And then down here you can see that if I remove it, I've removed all of the blemishes here. I've cleaned up this peach fuzz hair along her, her face here. Everyone has this hair, but when an image is going to be blown up huge and it's going to be so close up to someone's face, you just want to clean that up just to give it an overall cleaner look. And I've done the same along here with the slight peach fuzz on her, on her lips and on her chin here as well. All the tiny little blemishes and the little pieces of makeup that are catching light. I've cleaned all of that up. And that gives us an overall clean looking image. And you see if I remove it all from far away, you can see the difference is so incredibly minor. And that is our goal here. We want our image to look as clean and as natural as possible. And even if, if I zoom in here now, I can see that there's some things I still need to clean up and that I'd like to remove. And every now and then you'll see that you'll come back to your image, you'll be like, oh, I missed this part, or I didn't see this, or there's something else that needs to be edited here. And you can go ahead and do that. I recommend taking some breaks away from the image, look away from the image, spend two minutes, go and drink a glass of water or something, come back and then look at your image with fresh eyes uh, so that you really see what you're looking at. So you don't get too involved in your image and drawn down this deep, dark well of retouching and never come out because you can spend hours on the image very easily because it's, it's almost hypnotizing to sit and retouch an image. So I'm happy with the way this image came out and I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, this quick tutorial on how to retouch skin with frequency separation. And again, if you want to be one of the first to get into the second enrollment of that Photoshop retouching mastery course, make sure you click the link in the description and I'll see you in there. You'll get access to the private Facebook group where we can all communicate and share our images as well as uh, get access to all the videos, the tutorials, the actions and the image files. But that's all from me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like the video if you liked the video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more tutorials and videos in the future. And I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.